Hello, this screencast is about enzyme activity graphs. So this represents our enzyme and this is our substrate. The substrate binds to the active site, you get the induced fit, the enzyme cleaves the substrate and the substrate leaves. Here is a typical graph of the effect of temperature on enzyme activity. Enzyme activity up the side here, increasing activity. So as the temperature increases, activity increases through kinetic effects. At a certain point, the activity suddenly decreases. For most enzymes, this point optimum will be around about 37 body temperature. Um, and then rapid denaturation above that temperature. So we say around about 45 or 50 degrees, there's no activity of the enzyme. This is a typical graph of pH activity, so increasing activity going up, and this enzyme has an optimal pH of around about 7.5. A couple of pH units above and below that, it has very little activity. Here's the uh, optimal pH of a different enzyme. This enzyme works best at around about 3.5 or 4, pH 3.5 or 4, and has a slightly narrower range of activity. Now, if we're looking at the amount of start in a test tube with amylasin over time, as time progresses, the amount of starch will go down because it's being cleaved or digested by the enzyme until there's none left. Reaction slows over time. It's fast to begin with because there's loads of starch for the enzyme to work on. It slows down because in the end there's not very much starch available and the enzymes are finding the last little bits of starch to work on. You can show the converse here with the amount of product. Initially the, active, the, rate, uh, the uh, rate of reaction is fast uh, and then as all the starch gets used up there's very little left for the enzyme to do until the reaction finally completes. More common, you would see uh, a graph of enzyme activity. So let's just explain this first. In this situation, the substrate is limiting. There isn't very much substrate, and as soon as the substrate goes in, the enzymes will cleave it. So if you increase the amount of substrate, you will get increased rate of reaction. At this point, we've increased the amount of substrate, and almost all the enzyme is being utilized in substrate in, product out, reactions. If we get to this point, now we've got more substrate than the enzyme can cope with. The active sites are saturated. The enzyme is working flat out. So now there is substrate that isn't in an active site. So the speed of the reaction can't go any faster. It doesn't matter how much more substrate we add. We can't speed up the reaction because as soon as this substrate comes out, another substrate will go in. The enzyme is working flat out. So on a graph, that would look like this. This is enzyme activity. At low substrate concentrations, the rate of reaction is proportional to the amount of substrate. At this point on the graph, the enzyme is beginning to become limiting. And at the plateau here, all the active sites are full. So it doesn't matter how much more substrate we add in, we can't speed up the reaction. The enzyme is saturated. Now here are two important variants on that graph. This line here shows the effect of a competitive inhibitor. The inhibitor is occupying some active sites, so we need more substrate to get a certain reaction. Eventually we can achieve the maximum reaction, but we need much more substrate to do that. This graph has the line for a non-competitive inhibitor. The inhibitor doesn't bind to the active site, and the enzyme never achieves the maximum no matter how much substrate you add.